In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. On August 15th, this coming Wednesday, the Holy Orthodox Church will celebrate the Feast of the Dormition, or the falling asleep of the Most Holy Theotokos and Mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So in anticipation of that day, the gospel lesson that we heard this morning was the same gospel lesson that will be read on that day, the actual feast day of, of that event itself. And the message of that gospel lesson is not only both very powerful and very important for our spiritual formation and our spiritual foundation as human beings, but luckily for us, the message of that gospel lesson is also very simple, and it's very clear. So it won't hurt us to hear it again and to reflect on it today as we prepare to celebrate this last great feast of the Orthodox liturgical calendar year. The feast of the Dormition of the Theotokos is considered the most important of the feasts dedicated to the Mother of God that we celebrate throughout the entire year. And it has special significance for us here at the Basilica because it's the feast day of our blessed church. We are the Basilica of the Dormition or falling asleep of the Theotokos, the Basilica of St. Mary. And at every feast day dedicated to the Mother of God, the same gospel is read each time. It's the one that we heard today about the time when Jesus went to Bethany near Jerusalem to visit the home of Mary and Martha, who were the sisters of Lazarus, the man that Jesus raised from the dead. And the gospel says that Martha became upset with her sister Mary because Mary left her to serve the guests all by herself because Mary wanted to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to his teaching. So it says that at one point, Martha was so angry and so distracted by Mary's unwillingness to help her that she actually approached Jesus and asked him to tell Mary to get up and to go help her take care of the guests. But instead of doing that, Jesus responded to her by saying, Mar Martha, Martha, you are troubled and you are worried over so many things. Do not be distracted by this, because he said that there is only one thing needful, and that Mary, by sitting at my feet and listening, has chosen that one thing which is to hear the word of God and to keep it. And he told Martha that this one thing cannot and shall not ever be, taking, be taken away from your sister Mary. The last line of the gospel that we heard this morning says, blessed are those who hear the word of God and who keep it. So the church is reminding us today in the gospel that our life is more than just service to others or doing good works of mercy because our life must also include time for contemplation and time for prayer, time for reflection, and time to listen to God, time to thank God for all things, and time to ask him for mercy, and for strength, and for courage, and for guidance, and for fulfillment, 
so that we are truly able to serve others and that we're able to serve them with joy and with happiness and with contentment. And so that we won't become angry or distracted or preoccupied and troubled by our efforts in this life as we work to care for and to serve our follow, fellow man, which is the commandment of Christ for us to do. This is what Jesus was trying to remind Martha about in the gospel lesson that we just heard. And this is what the church is reminding all of us about when we celebrate any feast that's dedicated to the mother of God because at all of those feasts we hear the same gospel lesson. Saint Luke, in another place, says that Mary, Jesus' mother, was first and foremost a woman of contemplation and second, a woman of service. Because like Mary, the mother of Martha, Mary, the mother of God, understood and recognized this one thing need needful throughout her entire life. So St. Luke says that Mary, Jesus' mother, listened, and she pondered in her heart when the shepherds came to Bethlehem after the birth of Jesus and shared the joy of what they learned from the angels, the joy that this baby Jesus was indeed God incarnate, sent by his Father in heaven to bring peace and to bring goodwill towards all of men on earth. And knowing this and contemplating this reality in her heart, she went about her business of raising that child <coughs> who was the Son of God and dedicated her life to the total and to the complete and undistracted service of nourishing and of caring for and nurturing that little child who would eventually be lifted up on the cross to die for the sins of each and every single one of us. Mary was indeed a woman of contemplation and a woman of focus and a woman of dedication. She was and is an example for all of us of someone who truly understands what Jesus meant when he told Martha, do not be distracted and troubled about many things because there is only one thing needful, to hear the word of God and to keep it in your heart. And if we're able, in this life to hold on to that one thing, nothing can or will ever be a distraction to us. And it's because of her example, the example of the Theotokos, that the church recognizes and celebrates throughout the year both her birth, that will be celebrated on September 8th, and the events of her earthly life, <coughs> and also that it celebrates her death, her falling asleep or her dormition, which is celebrated in three days on Wednesday, on August 15th. St. Mary has become known to us in the hymns of the church as the heavenly ladder or bridge between heaven and earth. She is known as a priceless treasury of mercy, as the cup that draws joy for us from the found fountain of immortality. And she's called the tree of godly shade and the shelter of the entire world, the pillar of fire that guides us all towards heaven and the land of promise. She's called the eternal fountain of life giving waters and the queen of heaven and earth, 
the ship of those who want to be saved, and a peaceful harbor that off offers shelter to the oppressed. She's known as the knowledge of grace and the vessel of purity, the key to the kingdom of Christ, and the gate or the door of paradise. And in the Akathist hymn, the El Medaya service, sung every Friday during Great and Holy Lent, Saint Romanos calls her champion leader. And so, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we can all enthusiastically today say together in anticipation of that great and glorious feast, the feast of our blessed Basilica that we will celebrate together this coming Wednesday, we can all say and sing together to thee, O champion leader, the champion and example of the one thing needful, we, your servants, dedicate a hymn of victory and a hymn of thanksgiving because we have been delivered from eternal death by the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who was born from you. And to you we cry out and say, Rejoice, O Virgin Theotokos, Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you and was born from you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And because you are the joy of all those who sorrow, we can also say to you with one loud voice as we celebrate this blessed feast, Hail, O Bride, O Bride without Bridegroom. Blessed feast to all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs>